Good evening. Last week we discussed the foldable bikes. We also discussed the scuba gear or the fins and things that we're going to, to theoretically going to get. This week we're going to discuss spares and tools and things like that. And a rum runner bag. So thank you very much for last week, uh, you guys uh, have been excellent and I think that is maybe the main reason why I like the YouTube community. The YouTube community, you guys gave us so much feedback. We subscribed also to, at, uh, last time that I counted was around 114 um, other selling channels and from all of this you gained so much. I think this is a new kind of university. Um, I'm busy with my double PhD but I think we should say all these paper things is we should go to YouTube school. Oh, don't let Google hear that. Then we'll start paying for that too. Okay, anyway. So thank you very much for, for your awesome advice and, and um, comments that you give. Uh, you might have noticed that my arm is now not anymore white. So the white thing is gone. And if you look like this, I can already go you see it must go that far but I cannot and also if I go how was this oh yeah this way I cannot move you see this one <laughs> doesn't want to and then I can move like that already and I can move like that already so progress is is in the air I'm still very stiff as you can see um, so <coughs> I also use a new lens. If you guys want to have a quick look, here is the, the lens. It's a new lens. The problem is, is that that lens is not out of focus. So I, no, I never know whether it's in focus or not. It doesn't out of focus. So you have to tune it. It's like very old school manual things. Me, uh, electronic gadget guy, this is a little bit out of my reference field. But it's a F2, a F2 stop, a very, very awesome lens, and also a 15 millimeter lens without autofocus. Anyway, so let us see how that goes. Uh, let's carry on with this week. Um, <coughs> so, the first thing, first tool, is a boson chair. So, and it reminds me of my days when I was actually flying paragliders and also powered paragliders. It is more of a powered paraglider chair than it is a paraglider chair, but it looks like a little chair. Um, electric tools, electric tools, electric tools. I've got, I've got this one, but I will tell you now what is the problem with this one. This is a drill. I also got the Dremel drill, which is similar, similar thing. So the Dremel drill is actually my favorite and it's to do with my drone days when I was flying drones. The problem with the Dremel drone is that it uses this kind of socket, the European socket. So our boat will be fitted with European, this two prong sockets. But it's electrical, so maybe I should go for the higher one. This is the Dremel 200, and we might need to go for the Dremel 8000, the Series 8000, which is a battery, lithium battery operated one. So let's see what that happens. Then I also got these little things full of, I'm not going to open it because normally if I open it, everything falls out, but it has sockets and wrenches and Allen keys and all sorts of things in it. But maybe just for safety's sake, I will have maybe two of them. They're not that expensive, so we can maybe have two of them. And then some of the tools that I... Ooh, must be careful now. The sand is not strong. So, electronic engineer, my first degree. Um, I will know how to use this one. 
So this one can measure uh, volts, IC, DC and amperes. I think I would like to get a clampy one, the way you put a clamp over to me measure the amperes so you don't need to break the wire. So this might be a good and nasty one and it is waterproof and all of those things. But I think for currents maybe we need to have the little clamp one. Then I've got a glue gun. And now my other hobby is starting to come out. Uh, this glue gun I use for first person view drones. Racing drones, we, I was flying racing drones. This, this one can go into a lithium battery, drone battery. But it doesn't have a warning. If the battery, if the battery do, doesn't have a management thing, then it will drain it and you kill the battery. Like kill, kill, dead, dead. So it's not maybe a good idea, but this is soldering iron for 12 volt. Then I also have this thing here. Um, if you watch the winds just recently, they have this as well. So it's a nice thing, uh, magnetic. So it just it's a magnetic one, and it can you hold it here and you can turn it around corners and and still do stuff. It also has 57 pieces um, of stuffies that you can use. Pretty cool. Not sure how long it will last in the salty water, but that we need to find out later on. So this is the one set of tools, and I think for the, the spanners and the... Um, for the spanners and the, the sockets and things like that, the wrenches, maybe I will have two sets of each for in case one drop overboard, it sounds like everyone is doing that quite often. So that's it for, for that. Um, I will look for tools that has lithium batteries, so everything will be charged. So drills, saws, um, grinders and things like that. Um, so I'd rather do that. And then a chain counter. Um, another tool that I was thinking of is a chain counter. Chain counter and the reason is the Leopard 45 doesn't have a big space for counting or actually watching, even if you mark the, your, 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 your chain, to see the chain going out, I don't think it is it's that wide that you can actually quickly see how much scope you put out. So, I would drop the anchor, look at the counter, and then from there, make five times more, or three times, or seven times, depends on on the conditions of the sea. So the, I think a strain counter is good. Then a sewing machine. So sh sewing machine. We are thinking of doing the same as Ruby Rose. Um, they've got a sail right, and it looked very good for us. And in Cape Town, that's almost the uh, the top of the range to do in Cape Town. Cape Town has a lot of sail makers, Cape of Storms, <laughs> so they they do f repair a lot of sails. And um, as then another th talking about sails, what about a sail repair kit? So in a sail repair kit, um, we've got. I, I think I will put a manual in this. So I know how to fix the sails. So, and they've got the needles, and then they've got this hand thing that you put on with a steel plate or a bobbin thingy that you can press the needle through the. So, if the sail right machine conks or there's no electricity or what, for whatever reason, then I can still manually fix the sail. And then you get the strips of Dacron and you get strips of um, double sided glue things, pasting tape. So you get double-sided basting tape, so that is also that I will get. Um, I will also get uh, like different spools of cotton. So either the big one that is not treated and you have a little waxy soapy thing to treat it, or the the thread is already already treated for ultraviolet and things like that. So it depends on where you want to use it, you can use it then. It's just some of them is just expensive and others is very cheap. Um, so also leather, the, you, in the kit I think there should be like a piece of leather and I didn't know what it was for but 
at the clue at the corners of the sail you can actually then if the corner is been stripped or broken or torn like ripped out then you can actually use uh, if you want to make a new corner you need to have put leather in and both sides stitch it up with dacron and it will actually strengthen the sail and then you can make a new hole new punch also we will also have the grommet thingy uh, a jimmy grommet thingy so a jiffy grommet thingy to also do the grommets and uh, maybe also for the eyelets um, for the reefing lines so that will be there um, we will have a couple of ropes and, and I'm not sure about the ropes so I was thinking and I've just read now on a leopard leopard owners group um, that some of the highlights they they replaced with another one um, which is stronger but uh, more expensive as well but it goes faster through this thing so the sail drops faster so I will look at that one a Dina Dina um, rope uh, it's a new thing so I need to understand what that is but I might maybe buy those and then use the the, the halyards and things that comes the lines that comes with the, the running reading that's coming maybe replace it in with this Dina um, lines or ropes so we will have a few extra ropes sail ties I would like to have sail ties if you have a fuller and I will have a fuller system and the fuller is connected up and the lines is starting to the sheets is busy the wind pulled them pull them or whatever or water came over and pulled them and it is a little bit opening if it's opening a little bit the wind can catch it and it goes so I would like to put sail ties there so it doesn't go by itself and uh, so for that maybe a few spare sail, sail ties then shackles I think we will need a lot of shackles um, and blocks for I think we, we, we have blocks that we can put in for the code zero at this I think uh, coming with the boat but I also want to have spare ones for in case they break and, um, and also pulleys so we will see um, from Leopard what I have and then just maybe take exactly the same ones and have a, spares, a couple of spares for them and then duct tape very good friend of mine one time gave this super bad joke which I cannot tell you guys but very good use for duct tape so duct tape will be there and it will be different sizes, different lengths, uh, different colors maybe um, electric spare kit all of fuses if there's 10 5 amp fuses and say 2 10 amp fuses then I think it's obvious that I will not take 5 of each um, so but a certain percentage of the fuses I think I will have in a box and then lux and if you need to cut a wire or if a wire is getting cut then you need to be able to clean it so you need a wire stripper you need to put this lac on and maybe crimp it and also heat shrink so I will try to put uh, get uh, that thing so complete electrical toolkit repair toolkit for any electrical wires uh, or electrical issues that we can pick up and of course spare electrical wire I've seen um, also another channel where they uh, run out of uh, Bora Bora where they needed some electrical wire and there was no electrical wire so they had to use a from another thing like I think something like a pump of each that I didn't use um, and that's the wire that I used so I would rather have spare wire as well for in case something like that happens um, and spare pumps uh, spare pumps I would like to have spare pipes and those pipes is either the water the flexible ones or the stiff ones and all the all the bends and if you if you need to cut one like if it is burst and you need to cut and stitch it together again so the ones that can stitch them together so all of those pipey things I will also put on board and then I've got two Yanmar engines so the Yanmar engines I will need apparently Marcel said there is two sets of spares uh, spare kits so one is maybe for the first hundred hours and then after that the regular one um, so I will have a couple of those on board just to make sure that um, because one of the things is the first one 
the first couple of weeks we will go through the wild coast so there's going to be a lot of shaky things the wild coast is wild coast for a reason and we need to be able to prepare or repair things very quickly but the second one is depends on on the year i don't think this year we will make it but next year december the season to go to antarctica is always around december maybe late november but definitely you need to wait for the ice to to to, to melt so that i will go and that will be a long trip to go around antarctica from from Ushaya, from Argentina and you go around and you get to Australia so that is a little bit of a longer trip and you will need a lot of spares for that so that is, I need to think of that um, also then, water maker kit, we have a water maker kit but the water maker, not just the strainers, not just the filters not just the normal things, but also the o-rings make sure that we have a bunch of o-rings and Ruby Rose there's a link, I will put the link up. Ruby Rose had a video just on all the O-rings that you have. That's a, not a whole video on just for O-rings, but a video on spares. Lots of O-rings. So I would like to have also lots of O-rings. Since we will have diving stuff, so we will also have the diving um, spares and spare kits, which also will need a lot of O-rings. So that is the thing. And then Iridium Go. I would like to have a spare Iridium Go. And if you watch Delos just this weekend, uh, they actually ran into troubles because the Iridium now for the second time, I think it's electrical error there somewhere. But for the second time now, the Iridium Go stopped receiving now the weather maps, which is a problem. So because uh, it's not a good idea if you cannot get weather maps. And again, if we want to cross the Roaring 40s and the uh, Furious 50s and the Screaming 60s we would like to know what is the weather window where is those low level, low pressure cells and you need to get out of their way very fast and um, the window, you need to know what is the window for that so I don't want to lose the weather forecast for, for that trip then also a small mantis anchor for two reasons. The first reason is obviously for if you're at anchor and your boat is swinging too much and it might hit the wall, uh, uh, the, the shore, or rocks, you want to maybe anchor it there. But uh, second and also maybe the more important one is if you're in heavy seas, like the guys, I spoke to some of the guys that's doing the, the leopard deliveries from Cape Town to Australia and then they the ramp line to Australia is actually cutting through the Furious 50s and the sea states is 40 foot, 50 foot very high. And for that, the catamarans, the lepers start surfing very easily and they can then do a nose dive. So what they do is they take a bridle out at the back. So they put the, the, on, the on the two holes, the two cleats and they put the, like a bridle, but it's a hundred meter rope they put out. And this 100 meter rope at the end, they have a shackle kind of configuration, like a bridal setup. And there is the anchor and the mantis anchor, so it's just to keep the rope down. And just that rope is enough, first of all, to steer the, the, the cat down the waves in a straight line, to keep it in a straight line, but also to make sure it doesn't start surfing too fast. So, and you need the rope to be in the water all the time. We discussed the droke anchors with them and some of them they do make droke anchors but they don't like them in general. So the girl that is doing always the, the record speed from Cape Town to, to Australia, she used a rope. There's actually a video, I'll put the link for that video there as well. Awesome footage of the only video that I saw the sea state so, so high. And LEDs, so all the lights is LEDs, so we will have a couple of LEDs for, for the, the lights. So if the light goes out, then you can have that. And you might ask us, why don't we talk about impellers? Since I'm watching Delos, and since they've been now replacing these impellers at a furious rate, um, why... Don't. So I was I was in a long discussion with Brent from Catamaran MP and this topic came up because he has a video and I can post that link here as well 
where he actually throw the impellers out, actually the whole water pump system he, he kind of like thrown out and put a, a electrical pump there. So the electrical pump, the moment the alternators kick in, the electrical pump is then started by the alternators and it start, the water starts circulate. Um, I'll, you can look in the video but I will also show you guys the moment we install it, how we install it and uh, that will be like another couple of videos. So no impellers. Um, we will replace it even before we leave Cape Town to make sure we don't have impellers but we need then extra spare water pumps to make sure that they are all there. They say I need spare props. I'll have some spare props for the dinghy and for the boat. If you do eat a rock, you need to replace your props. Um, so I will have spare props as well. So <clears throat> where are we going to put all of these things? You may ask. And I may answer you. So if you look at this video clip, so you go down on the starboard side and this is where we're going to put the spares. Yeah, you're right. This is not a four cabin version, it's an owner's version. But what about episode six, you will cry. Um, yes, <laughs> that was when we were still young and, and dumb. Now all your viewers have come up with lots of awesome advice. I looked at other things. We actually looked at the catamaran, at the Leopard 45, at the Star Wars, where we can fit it in. And my idea and what is actually there didn't work out. Also, we tried to unify the two bathrooms. I'm not sure what you call it. It's a head and a shower, right? I'm not sure what you call it now, but there's two heads and showers. We wanted to combine them. It's not going to work out. So we decided to go for the owner's version. And we will discuss that at a later video. So big changes, big, big, big changes that we did. This brings me to the Ram Runner bag. Do you guys know what is a Ram Runner bag? It just sounds so Caribbean. I'm sure my Afrikaans accent is not making it less romantic. Um, so a Ram Runner bag is actually a bag that you put stuff in and you there's a little rope on top and you just pull it and this is a ram runner bag I don't know if you sailors have a ram runner bag I think it's awesome